We are Marc, Amy, Juliette and Clément from the medieval Chateau de Rosières. This Christmas we've made you a very special advent calendar. Every day from the 1st to the 25th of December we will open the door to a different room in the chateau and introduce you to its past, present and future. Merry Christmas. Hello everybody, this is Amy and Mark from Chateau de Rosier. And today we're showing you the fanciest room in the chateau. And for that I've put my fanciest clothes on. You look very fancy. I haven't ironed mm. them, but I've made a bit of an That's effort. That's not so fancy. <laughs> you look very Austrian. Though. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyway, uh, this is the master bedroom and it was redone in the 19th century. You've heard of us talking about part of the chateau that was um, mangled a bit in the 19th century with the aim to make it like a beautiful show chateau rather than a, um, a fortress kill people that want to hurt you chateau. Um, and this was one of the showpiece rooms along with the dining room, wasn't it? Exactly. So it's not the latest bedroom, I would say. Latest? Uh, well, the to be the decorations quite uh, oh what with all the wood yeah yeah but in terms of actual light it's the yeah, lightest in, by far yeah yeah in terms <laughs> of light there are big windows so it's not too yeah. bad uh, it's just that the there's a lot of wood of uh, wood yeah. panelings which is really beautifully carved and uh, quite intricate and a lot of uh, craftsmanship went into that room but uh, as it was the fashion in the 19th century, it is a bit uh, heavy, I would say. <laughs> yeah, although it could have been a lot darker. What kind of wood is it actually? It is uh, sweet chestnut, which is the local, local wood. Yeah. And the floor is, uh, it looks like walnut to me actually. Um, so yeah, it could have been a lot uh, darker, especially because at the time they liked to... Um, well, it was actually quite fashionable to be in the dark and to yeah. feel uh, to, so they would uh, they would glaze uh, wood with very dark colors and uh, and make it uh, yeah make it look really dark really. <laughs> uh, it was all the neo gothic fa fashion yeah. with uh, where you would uh, basically uh, fantasize about what the Middle Ages used to be. Even Without though, living yeah, in the with, reality yeah. of it, yeah. Yeah, so the, the reality was that uh, it was dark in the Middle Ages, <laughs> but just because you had no windows and it was a fortress. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was dark because there was no light. But the reality is that in the Middle Ages, they would have uh, sprayed all the, li the walls with the lime to make it lighter on the yeah. contrary. So it would have been raw stone, <laughs> quite cold, but uh, nearly white on the inside but with hardly any light. Yeah. And the neo-Gothic fashion uh, was, it was more of um, what people imagined the, the Middle Ages to be mm -hmm. through stories and uh, yeah. tales that, were, that went uh, through literature. The funny thing about this room is that even though it's probably the most spectacular and uh, sleeping ready room in the chateau, it's, we've not got a huge amount to say about it historically because they did a pretty good job in the 1870s of completely erasing the past from this room. So the most we can say about the history is, look at this, this is a beautiful room from about 150 years ago. And there are some lovely little details like the internal shutters um, and the carving on the side of the fireplace and the vents in the side of the fireplace and the plafond de la Française on the roof, on the ceiling. Um, Mark's doing some signalling to me. What do I want to talk about? Talk what about else, my Cherie, would you like to talk about? The fireplace, you didn't mention the fireplace. I did mention the fireplace. Yeah, but the, not all the... You I didn't, mentioned that earlier. You didn't mention every single carving. So yeah, there's this fireplace in the room. I don't know if I mentioned it before, um, but no, it's... <laughs> It's a backstreet videographer over there. Uh, it's 
beautifully, beautifully carved and it would have actually had a fire in it before. And we know a little bit about how this room was used. What do you want? But the, he didn't mention the back of the fireplace. What about the back of the fireplace? Well, there's a heat uh, recycling system with the uh, whole cast iron thing. And it's uh, very... Uh, it was very advanced. For I time. was... I'm going to let Mark tell you about the, uh, no, the, that in a minute. Well. I had something else to talk to them about. Uh, please do. I don't want to interrupt. So Mark's going to tell you more about the fireplace shortly. Uh, for my part, what I wanted to tell you about was um, a little bit about some interesting history that we know about from here, which is that when Bruno, who used to live here in the 40s with his family, lived here, his mother lived in this room and he remembers his mother giving birth to his baby sister in this room, which I think is pretty wonderful. And... Um, that's about the only tidbit we've got, other than the fact that this probably would have always have been the master bedroom since it was built. And um, what I'd like to tell you a bit is a bit about the future, but before I get to that point, um, I feel like I need to hand back to Mark so he can tell you his um, things about the fireplace. So Amy didn't want to mention the fireplace. <laughs> Uh, I find it actually quite interesting because it was probably an extremely advanced heating system for the time in the late 19th century. And this mostly because of the, the back, uh, the cast iron back. Um, at the time, most of the time, you would just have a standard uh, cast iron plate to deflect the heat and prevent the wall uh, at the back from overheating. But this one has actually a much more advanced system because it's all uh, cast iron as well. But there is a system of, of uh, grid with hollow pipes like a uh, reverse radiator. And as uh, Amy mentioned, there are vents on either side of the fireplace. And the point of that was to heat up the air on the side uh, inside the, the cast iron grid and the air was then blown onto the sides of the fireplace. So it would have been a very efficient heating system for the time, uh, especially in a room which has uh, such a high ceiling. So at the time also it was, uh, they had switched most of the fireplaces of the chateau into using charcoal because charcoal was uh, less of a fire hazard because it doesn't uh, it doesn't spark uh, and uh, it doesn't project uh, flames everywhere it just combusts gently and produces a lot more heat for uh, per unit per unit of volume so it's quite likely that this uh, fireplace would have been used actually with charcoal but the heating system would have made it uh, really, really effective for the time. So it was probably uh, something very expensive and very elaborate that very few houses would have had. The man who uh, was responsible for the huge renovations of the chateau in the 1870s was called Octave de la Vallette. Uh, he was uh, from the same family that had held the chateau for two or three hundred years. Um, and who only sold it in the 1960s. And so he was one of Bruno's ancestors who came here. And he was quite a visionary. Uh, he wanted this place to be resplendent and probably to compete with other um, pretty chateau in the area, whereas before this was probably quite a big, dark, uninviting place. And we love the spirit that he had that he and the vision he had in transforming uh, this chateau and the bravery that he had in doing things like digging down into the bedrock to make a room taller or moving an entire floor to make another room taller. And we felt that this room as his signature room befitted some pretty spectacular um, changes from us but with a beautiful floor, beautiful carvings, everything being essentially perfect once restored. I mean, the floor's in a pretty rough state right now, but once it's restored, it'll be lovely. The only thing we were left with was the wall coverings. 
and uh, when we moved in they were quite um, dull they had just board in the in each panel and with a very faded not terribly high quality wallpaper not very interesting and we've always loved the the picture panoramic wallpapers um, of different companies what's the big company Zuber and people like that uh, but they are way beyond our budget at the moment um, and but but the imagination behind them where you you can sit in your room and look at the world around you um, was something we thought we might emulate here because essentially each panel on the wall has the potential to be a big picture and something you can look at so we decided to collaborate with um, an artist called Diane Hill and she did chinoiserie paintings for walls and things and for the first time she agreed to paint onto fabric uh, which is um, we felt was more in keeping with the history of the room and would also dampen the sound and warm it up we could put um, we've put a layer of insulation behind it and she painted scenes that were um, homage to scenes from our lives that meant a lot to us as a couple. And this was before our children came along, otherwise pretty much we'd have just blown up fa their faces and stuck them on the wall probably, wouldn't we? Not <laughs> you wouldn't even listen to me. Um, so we have, yes, <laughs> we have two walls, two panels, which are references to the Caribbean, which is where we met. Um, on a crazy volcanic island that was mostly off limits to the public and Mark was growing lettuce and I was in a midlife crisis, early midlife crisis. And we did um, two walls, one, two, was that three to the Caribbean? Three to the Caribbean. Um, two walls to where we did our honeymoon, which was a completely crazy trek in the uh, upper glacier in the Ruanzori mountains on the border of Uganda and Congo, um, which was quite an adventure, and had a very, very special flora. And then the back three panels are a reference to life here in Rosier. And what's lovely is it, it not only makes the room bright and cheerful and um, individual, but it reminds us of uh, how far we've come and uh, all the brings together pieces of our lives here. And um, since we've had the children, it's become even more special because they absolutely love it. Uh, if we sleep in this room, which we, it depends on the time of year, how the children are, all sorts of things. Then the first thing that Juliet does when she wakes up is to sit bolt upright and point at a bird. And she'll just sit and babble about the birds. She absolutely loves them. And you will have noticed that there are big wrinkles in a lot of the fabrics. There's a long story behind this, which we'll continue a little bit tomorrow. We were filmed for the TV show Chateau DIY, and this was one of the biggest projects we did for them and one of the first ones. Now, they have a deadline to reach for their um, programming, and we were not able to get to that deadline in time. <laughs> so we ended up just rushing and putting them on the walls anyhow to make it to be able to do some sort of presentation because at the time our aim was to turn this room into a luxury bed and breakfast that would provide us income whilst we were doing renovations elsewhere in the chateau we got all we were going to finish this room finish the wall coverings finish the ensuite bathroom everything um, we had a huge amount of bookings already from when we showed it on the TV and then um, the pandemic hit and we lost all the bookings and we didn't know when it might come back so we stopped work on here. Possibly we were a bit depressed because we'd just lost um, all of the fruits of our labour. Because it was our first season we got no government help for um, the lost bookings because they based it all on your previous season. Um, I was pregnant and so it was difficult to do some of the work and we just decided to take a different direction. 
we thought we don't know how long this is going to last it kept going on and on we had children so we had to think about whether we would be able to live in the main chateau whilst um raising them or we had one at that point um so we decided to then refocus our efforts on the coach house and um, some other major works obviously everything has gone very very slowly since having two children within two years and there being a pandemic and all sorts of things so it's not been finished but it's something that we really really want to do next year um i don't know if we would ev we would be able to rent it out still because the rest of the chateau is probably going to be in pieces <laughs> but one day we hope that this will be a wonderful room when people come and stay here they always have a good night's sleep they seem happy I mean, Philip and Stephanie, Stephanie kept saying it was the most beautiful room she'd ever stayed in, which was a huge compliment because her chateau is pretty lovely. And I think it has a lot of potential for the future, but um, uh, we do still need to do a bit of work on it. One of the other amazing things in this room is the view. It's just this panoramic view of beautiful mountains, including the the mountain opposite us which is where the original fortress of rosier was in the 10th century and you can still see the ruins on the top hopefully we'll take you on a visit there one day um, but also if you look out of this window in the mornings you get the sunrise and you get to see the alps a huge array of the alps and uh, they're not terribly visible all of the time but when you do see them they're absolutely stunning Furniture ways, uh, there are a few interesting items in this room. The most uh, striking one is probably the four poster bed, which is really, really massive. It's not a very old bed because it's made of uh, tropical wood. Uh, so I'd say it's at the, the earliest 19th century, but probably more likely uh, 20th, actually. <laughs> uh, but it actually does match the room really well yeah. because of its dimensions and the style of carvings, too. Mm. Uh, so it was there when we arrived, because I guess uh, you can't fit it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, then there's the yeah. trunk, isn't there? And then the trunk was a fine uh, edit from a brocante. It was completely eaten with worms and uh, really not looking really well. It, but uh, I had it restored by a really good carpenter. And what's the most interesting about it is its lock, because uh, it has a beautiful uh, lock that looks like the, the one on the big wardrobe in the laundry room we showed yeah. you the other day. The key is actually very similar. And that was a, a trunk that was meant for carrying uh, f money, basically, because it mm. is very reinforced uh, all around. So. Yeah. And it was meant to stop people from robbing you when you were traveling, wasn't it? Yeah, probably. Into it was. It. Uh, yeah, it would have been quite hard to break into yeah. it. We've put some of our nicer furniture in this room because it's where we put our guests and there are some nice, delicate little antiques and... Um, I think apart from the chairs around that table, um, everything is stuff we've brought in here, isn't it? Oh no, and these no, two big really, armchairs, yeah. um, but some of the others are, and um, we quite like it. There's not much else, actually. There's not much else. <laughs> we like to keep it quite open. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's all on this room today, but we had a quick chat because we also want to show you the, um, the ensuite bathroom of this room because there's some really, really special stuff in there um, about past, present and future. And so we've decided because we've waffled on for so long today to do you another episode on that tomorrow. And it's quite an interesting one, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's interesting architecturally and uh, yeah. And some of our choices of on it. Yeah. So I think you might enjoy that one. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. About half the people who watch our videos haven't subscribed. And if you do, <laughs> if you do, it's massively helpful to us because it tells YouTube that people like us and it sends it out to other people then. Um, so yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.